Hey, Open Trades. I want to do a video analysis update of today's unusual stock options volume. There were three themes that I've talked about in recent videos, and I really hit on that. Uh, we've seen the institutions continue to take their positions in, and today was a good example of that. Uh, really across the board, uh, the three themes that I've talked about that I'm re referencing in this, in this video, besides probably the emerging markets theme, the rotation specifically in the Asian markets uh, that could be, could be going on globally, was that as far as American markets went, it really seemed like micro caps uh, were a big theme and that real estate and a lot of these rate sensitive sectors like commodities were going to be a big theme. And as far as micro caps had gone. There was one sector in particular that I've talked about, the biotech sector. And I really hadn't been the biggest biotech uh, commentator for a very long time. I certainly don't know much about the, or really anything about the fundamentals uh, of these biotech stocks, but I've just been noticing for a pretty long time consistently that the institutions had been taking lots of large biotech uh, biotech positions. And if you can't really tell maybe where I'm going with this, um, it's a little odd. It's a little odd. This isn't the biotech stock I'm going to talk about. This is just to get to Moderna. And it's to get into Pfizer uh, as well. Because I think that this is kind of important. People don't really understand that CEOs should not be doctors. The CEOs should not be doctors ever, ever. And, and here's why. Because a doctor can be sued for giving you really bad medical advice. Now, because they called these the V word, because they called these the V word, doctors actually got a huge loophole. They got this huge legal loophole because they called this the V word, okay? And you can tell because I'm calling it the V word that when real doctors in 2020 and 2021 said, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the V word at all, they were silenced on platforms like this. And the reason that CEO, CEOs shouldn't ever be giving anyone medical advice is because a CEO, by and large, is only bound by one obligation, and that is to maximize shareholder returns. And so within all, that's the only, and people think about that. That's the only thing that while a CEO is serving in his role that he can get in trouble for. He, he, he can't get in trouble for giving you bad medical advice unless it causes the company to be sued. Does that make sense? He can't get in trouble for mass genocide of young Americans. Why? Well, he could if he could be sued for it. That's the only way if his company could be sued for it. That's the only way a CEO can legally ever care about your well-being ever. And I, I'm 100% I'm serious. The only time legally a CEO can ever, ever care about you or your well-being is if you are a shareholder, a stakeholder, and, and that's really it. Or you are someone who can sue the company that that CEO reports to and then that's the only other way. So when Pfizer and Moderna were doing all this work to silence medical opinions, what did that do? That removed the legal ramifications of the CEO saying whatever he wanted. Yeah, they're safe and effective. You can't, you can't sue because of the V word. That, that law came out in the 1990s before a lot of the, the Gen Z people were born. They didn't even know how big of a deal uh, that was. That, that even getting that V word law passed, it was so sacred. And it put in these three to five year really strict limitations for a V word that had emergency use authentications. And the doctors, I didn't know this. I didn't know this crap. You think I knew this in 2020 and 2021? I had doctors 
explain this to me. And people explained this to me in 2020 and 2021. And of course, I knew the business side before the medical side. And they were getting silenced. So this is why it's important to understand. Because I've been talking about the crazy biotech stock of the day for a long time. And spoiler alert, basically every biotech, crazy biotech stock I've talked about has hit. Pretty hard. Pretty hard. And that's because they have pretty low floats. And it's real easy to see uh, when the institutions are taking advantage of their less than liquid op options markets. And I'm pretty damn good at Elliott Wave. But sell them the cure. No, sell them, sell them, the, sell them the cancer. Sell them the cure. Sell them the AIDS. Sell them the cure. Sell, sell them anything. Sell them the cure. We're hearing about prion disease now. We're hearing explosive, explosive Google search trends for young, early onset dementia. I'm sure they'll say that's a new variant, right? Early onset dementia and prion disease which is very similar to zombie deer disease, which just so happened to be a real outbreak that was occurring at the exact time a former president uh, released a movie with a giant deer on it about apocalyptic events happening to planes, trains, and automobiles. Have you guys heard about any apocalyptic events? Oh, and power outages. Have you guys heard about any apocalyptic events of weird stuff going on with planes, trains, and automobiles, and also unusual power outages in 2024? Well, that might just be one coincidence, because the other one is that zombie deer disease, zombie deer disease was floating around, right? And that's how we got prion disease into the minds of the masses, because none of us knew what prion disease were. We had to be told about it uh, from zombie deer disease. But now we're finding out why they really wanted us to know what prion disease was. And you're, you're, let me tell you this, you're going to be Googling what prion disease is. You're going to be Googling early onset dementia, and you've probably already Googled myocarditis and, and pericarditis, turbo cancers, AIDS, all that stuff. And I just want to show you this when you're hearing about the people you care about and, and they have dementia, young people having dementia. Isn't that kind of scary? The, U, the UK government. The UK government, by the way, released an official report that said in each of the first five months of uh, 2023, from uh, the first five months of 2023, the UK government said if you were born from ages 18 to 39 and you, they had, a, they had all the groups, the people who took all four of their boosters in every single month was either over four times more likely to have died that month than the person who didn't take any of the injections at all. And by the way, interestingly, uh, to the numerology and uh, other communities, it's the fourth one. That fourth booster is really the one that, that had that big spike. Look at the UK government report. Uh, I'll probably uh, leave a link to it in the bio, but you can look it up. UK government report. Uh, adverse, it's not, it's one of the largest studies they've done. It's directly from the UK government, and it says you were four times more likely to die if you took the stuff. And let me tell you something. The CEO of Moderna and Pfizer cannot legally give a fuck. It is illegal for them to give a damn about young people getting dementia. You know why? Or turbo cancers, or AIDS, or prion disease. You know why? One, because I'm buying and holding Moderna, and I'm blending it with MRNY that sells out of the, that sells out of the money synthetic covered calls on Moderna. And I think from this low, there's a pretty good chance this is wave one, and this is wave two. So I'm getting ready for Moderna to go. I'm buying Moderna Commons, and I'm buying uh, Moderna MRNY, Moderna Out of the Money Synthetics. And this could get uh, pretty explosive. From this low, the bullies, who's me and no one else, the bullies are going to look for that 61.8% retracement to hold in the short term. 
That's a nice level of 115. That's not the level. 115.97 is the high. So I'll get the exact to the decimal. Always get it to the decimal. I know. It'll get, it'll get the numbers for the lows and the highs in your head, and that's important too. For me, at least. And it's definitely important to the people buying these options. I can promise you that. I've done research into the numerology behind some of their lot sizes in their orders and it's pretty interesting and it's honestly really helped out but yeah moderna they can't legally give a damn about all this stuff and and people are wondering what this apocalyptic event is people are wondering what this apocalyptic event is you know what there probably will be a power outage at some point in our, in our lives there probably will be a world war three but let me tell you something i i really thought about this hard i'm gonna tell you I really thought about this hard, about what this leave the world behind kind of apocalyptic event that some people believe is being programmed. I've really thought about it, guys. I think the answer is genuinely all of those zombie movies that came out in the, the 2010s. The Walking Dead came out, and then during that, we just had zombie mania. That was probably the name of one of the movies. But we had all the zombie land franchises, World War Z. There were probably tons and tons of others. And the, all the horror movies were about becoming possessed by demons, which is basically uh, becoming a zombie. And I'm sure that genre of demon possession horror movies was out for a while. Um, but the zombie genre, the zombie genre just exploded out of nowhere. Also around the time that we started to get real obsessed with these kind of health doctor shows. Uh, the the good doctor that might not be the best one. What was the one that all the um, the white women were watching? They were obsessed with this. It wasn't House MD, but you know what I'm saying. That genre, Grey's Anatomy, right? Grey's Anatomy was coming out around the same time as the zombie kind of era and the zombie film kind of era. And the message, you know, not, it wasn't like a message, but just in the minds of the the media masses, a lot of Young women, especially, and young men, I'm sure, thought that the most noble profession where you, you really couldn't go wrong uh, was being a doctor. And those people, you know, the brightest minds of the gen this generation and, you know, the soldiers. The think about all those noble people, those young noble people who they want to be soldiers and they want to be doctors. They were the first in lines not only to get this, but to, you know, receive it and to administer it. And we're just, this is just one example. This is just one example of how they are getting ready to cure what they caused. And every single day, I see this, and I just think, because I'll, well, we can make we can talk about some firearm stocks in this video too. A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, large wave one for Johnson and Johnson. A, B, C, uh, wave two between the fifty to sixty one point eight percent retracement for. Uh, J and J, and then from this low, another wave one and another wave two. The length of wave one placed at the wave two low could take Johnson and Johnson in the long term up into the lower 200s. And Johnson and Johnson is not going to go to the lower 200s if a very wide invalidation of 144.95 holds, but realistically, that's way too wide for J and J's low beta. The actual proper invalidation would be 163 point, <laughs> I gotta stop doing that. This high is 163.58. This low is 144.95. So the stop zone is gonna be the 61.8 to 78.6% retracement. 152 looks like a pretty good level, 148. Probably the Goldilocks, 148.94 is that exact number. That's the Goldilocks uh, level, most likely. So J and J, one, two, three, four, five, large wave one, and ABC uh, wave two, Pfizer. I made one of my greatest trades ever and really uh, changed my life uh, forever on Pfizer with options. I didn't, uh, we did see this low go. That means from this low, Yes, this is probably one, two, three, four, five waves up, uh, but it is not um, a the beginning of a large wave one. It appears to be the end of a long-term cycle. So this was what I had uh, for Pfizer for a bit. 
And so it looks a little messy, but we're just gonna look at this in conjunction, in conjunction with J and J, and in conjunction uh, with some of these other stocks, the the crazy biotech of the day. The crazy biotech of the day. That was this theme that I've talked about for a bit. This invalidation comes from the 161.8% extension of the length of wave one placed at the wave two low. I'll clean this up. But yeah, people were calling for Albert Boulia to go to jail and I was just like, oh man, this is why people need to take business law. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. I could tell you for certain if the if the NBA and the NFL were publicly traded companies, I can absolutely promise you there's they they'd be required by law uh, to fix their games. They'd be required to. It would not be an option. I would even say that since they have these partnerships with DraftKings and MGM Grand, and the, those are publicly traded companies, that most likely uh, the NFL simply working uh, with publicly traded uh, gambling companies means they have to they have to fix their games. And now what? Now the gambling companies, what are they doing? They're making they're making everyone uh, addicted to gambling, right? They're making everyone addicted to gambling. Guess what? They are required by law to make people addicted to gambling. That that is a legal requirement they have. Why? Because that's going to increase shareholder returns, unless they get sued. But how they have a legal department, so their legal department knows how they're not going to get sued. They're just going to put a big disclaimer, and say, "Hey, a gambling problem phone number." I saw an ad last night. It, I don't even know if this was with real money or not, but it was just like a twenty-four hour slot machine game online. I again, I don't know if it was real money that could be played for or not. I genuinely didn't know. I think it was real money, but I was just like, really? A 24-hour slot machine app just on your phone? Legal. And that could be, I don't even know if it's legal, but even if it wasn't real money, this is what they're trying to condition. And so this is just understanding, understanding this is what a conflict of interest looks like in the business scale. This is when people say that economics is supposed to, it's supposed to, uh, get rid of times when the most the most ep governments are supposed to get rid of times when the most efficient thing to do is not in the be in, from a business perspective is not in the best interest of the masses it's most profitable probably for the oil companies just to dump all their oil in the sea it's probably most profitable for materials and uh, paint companies and lead companies to dump it in our drinking water, right? But of course, they could get sued for that now. So now it's not uh, legal for them to do that. And this is just something where when we have a, we talk about a big pharmaceutical injury, these people now required by law, give people diseases and give people cures. Let's just see what happens. And a lot of these, I'll be honest, this is what's kind of sad. Neuro neurodegenerative diseases, zombie deer disease prion disease early onset dementia we're gonna see our, our loved ones and and they they could still be alive and their brains are gonna be degenerating at a young age there's lots of articles about this assuming they don't die i mean and we don't even know how how long the shelf life is and i i even hate to use those words but that's just where we are right now the pfizer they sold you they sold you the problem and now what they're gonna sell you the cure and I think about some of these just, just before I get into the unusual options volume. I've talked about these firearm stocks. I've talked about these firearm stocks. And I know it seems really dumb. I think sometimes about what the real the real rally for these that explains this rally. That P-O-W-W. -W, you know, I hate that it's a P, the ticker is P-O-W-W. -W, that scares me. P-O-W. But pow. Ammo, right? Um, P-O-W-W. -W. Uh, 4.6% after hours. Uh, didn't know that until I just saw this. But I think about what are these firearm stocks going to be rallying on? Are they the assumption has always been that they are going to because Joe Biden's not popular and he's old. Uh, they're going to stage his exit from the scene and Kamala Harris is going to be uh, president. 
and she's going to ban guns like she said she always wants to. And so then they're going to blame the taking away of American liberties on an unelected brown woman. And um, that's just how that's just how they do it. That's, you know, Kamala sold her soul and now she's going to sell out her her people. And she's going to be the reason um, that all women and unfortunately, um, the first woman president of color, she's going to come in. She's going to take away all of our rights and liberties. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'm too optimistic about this. What I was going with this, this could be the zombie apocalypse, prion disease, right? Everyone's got to go buy guns because people are turning. I think about that. And I know it sounds crazy. Pup, how could this happen? How, you, 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 how could this happen? They buy, they buy straddles and strangles on Verizon. Just look into this. They, they put this stuff in people for a reason. And early on, the mainstream theory was that these had these this, these rollouts had something to do with 5G. And I always thought that was odd how that was like a highly broadcasted theory, like because that, that didn't make any sense. Who came up with that? This, I think that that was part of the programming. And now what? We're having these 5G outages. AT and T got attacked. I'm telling y'all. They, they buy that 17 strike straddle on AT&T like it's going out of style every day. They know AT&T is not going to be anywhere near 17 two or three quarters from now. All these blackouts. And then two weeks later, also, I'm pretty sure on a Tuesday, social media and Instagram down. And a lot of these people, I, I, I hope, I hope it's optimistic. I hope it's optimistic. And this is just the standard rate covering rally maybe it's even a post-recession roaring 20s rally and I, i'm looking too much into it but power outages 5g stocks and this is just this is just one of them realistically I, it could be the crazy 5g stock of the day but um let's let's look at what uh let's look at let's look at the other the other stocks because it's not just pup you're talking about neurogener neurodegenerative disease a lot of these let me tell you the most common ones Immunotherapy. I've learned, I've read immunotherapy a lot looking at the screen. I've read cardiac disease, which is kind of obvious. And the other one that I read a lot, neurodegenerative disease and cancer. And so uh, I think that those are pretty expected. But neurodegenerative disease, I don't think that was on a lot of people's, that's kind of a interesting one. And I'm just look it up. Lots of stories about early onset dementia, lots of them, and they'll say it's a variant, but let's look. All of these gene therapy stocks, they, they gave y'all the problem, and I'm telling y'all, we, we see their cure. Let's just see what happens to some of these. I should probably look at CLDX. We'll look at that for a sec. CLDX, but Neo Genomics Inc. What's this company do? is a high complexity CLIA certified clinical laboratory that specializes in cancer genetics diagnostic testing. Cancer genetics diagnostic testing. So they just gave everyone lots of cancers uh, with mRNA, genetics, gene editing. And now they're buying calls on the stock to test everyone for genetics diagnostic cancer, cancer genetics diagnostic testing. Uh, Neogenomics is a highly complex, com is a high complexity CLIA certified clinical laboratory that specializes in cancer genetics testing, cancer genetics diagnostic testing, the fastest growing segment of the laboratory industry. The company's testing services include uh, cytogenetics, fluorescence in C2 hybridization, flow cytometry, morphology studies, anatomic pathology, and molecular genetic testing. Wow. So they had lots of, uh, lots of people take very harmful and dangerous uh, gene editing vaccines. They forced them um, and coerced them on a lot of people who economically, especially if they had kids and, you know, even just that they needed to eat. And in some parts of the world, enter a grocery store to buy food. 
they they've got they've got the cure to that now. This is all a big fancy sector. They've had this. This has been in the works for years. These are long term Elliott wave cycles. They, we can probably even figure out the date right here. Boom. We'll probably find out. Yep. Five seventeen April. Let's see. Sixty times three thousand one hundred seventy three. There we go. 190 bands come way out of the money. 190 bands way out of the money. Cause really unusual stock options volume on uh, Neo Genomics. 229% unusual options volume. Two puts for safety to 3,800 calls next to Arbutus Pharmaceuticals. So let's look at the wave count of neo but yeah this is really far out of the money this is this is the options market says there's a, a 74 75 percent chance these options are completely worthless well this guy thinks he, he has something to beat the odds we'll see taking these low delta trades uh, hedged a little bit from an exposure standpoint with the july strikes just in case you know he interpreted the code wrong but yeah um, big, big money bought on Neogenomics, pretty far out of the money. Uh, some deep in the money for July, but looks like they're getting ready for our spring announcement. Let's see, gene editing, cancers, gene, oh, testing too. What's that other stock, uh, talk, stock I talk about? Co-diagnostics, code X, the X solar eclipse. Uh, Elon changing the name of the website to X. I mean, probably... The Project X programming, the big rave we're all going to have when these people start to get turned on. Three. I mean, you really think they just made also the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, Evil, Evil Guy. All the kids watched it. Think about how many kids that took this jab. They were coerced or tricked into doing it. Or they were just radical radicalized communist with blue hair that could have been you know but yeah neogenomics how many of these people grew up watching the spongebob squarepants movie how's that movie in plankton guy with one eye like the illuminati the illuminated ones i can't even say that word doesn't exist but it was founded uh, by a member of the jesuits the same year about uh, two months before um america was founded and the declaration of independence was written but yeah, neogenomics, long term, long term, but the uh, long term way too low could be put in. That's not going to be very useful. I'll get into the daily count. Just want to make sure that the the wave is clear. SpongeBob SquarePants movie Plankton uses capitalism to get every single person to wear his chum bucket hat. And then what? Once everyone's got the chum bucket on besides Squidward, SpongeBob and Patrick, he turns that on. And everyone just has this choop over their head. And all hail Plankton. All hail Plankton. I just, I don't know. The Walking Dead. World War Z. Now they're programming World War Three, getting us ready for something. I, I've really thought about this. I've looked at the 5G stocks and, and the stocks, that, the cellular communications. That's another thing. Cellular communications, networks, all that. It's like, okay. So biotech's going to explode. Cellular, network, cellular networks are going to explode. And firearm stocks are going to explode. Maybe it's just the rate cut cycle, right? Maybe it's just the rate cut way too. But that's, that's just not really how these, these folks operate. They don't just tell us, hey, uh, neogenomics is going to go up. It's, it's our new burgeoning sector. And it's going to get some grants. So we want... We want uh, the wealth world, you know, the American people to know about this great advancement we've made and, and capitalize on it. No, they, they don't do it like that. It's always a who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen this coming at a super cycle low? The unusual options volume screens, the straddle and strangle screens make it very clear. Neogenomics, Moderna, I'm maybe maybe this will be quite honestly, maybe it's just going to be bad news. Maybe we're just going to keep hearing uh, the CDC say, yep, this was the flu. Yep, we were idiots. Yep, we, you know, basically almost per perpetuated 
And, and if you look at the death statistics, uh, the death statistics, they did perpetuate a second Holocaust. And we're you're finding out about it silently. Another study. There were five states that mandated elderly, you know, people in nursing homes get jabbed. Man, don't look at those statistics. If you live in those states and one of your elderly people uh, ha happened to die and was forced to take the jab in a nursing home, if you live in one of those states, I wouldn't look at those statistics unless you are in a really good emotional position. 11.03. That's a wide invalidation, but that is going to be the proper invalidation. Pretty high beta for NEO. Yeah, 13. That's 78.6% retracement. Super tight. So I'm thinking power outage, something goes wrong with the 5G, and we need neurogen. <laughs> That's probably a little much, right? Maybe they just turn the lights on and off. Maybe they just, you know, it's more of the same with what moves the uh, firearm stocks, which would still be unfortunate. Um, but I look at this, and I, I think, okay, wait a minute. So knowing that I really think 5G is about to explode, all those zombie movies that came out. Now we've got prion disease, zombie deer disease. The end of the world was marked by deer acting like zombies and leave the world behind. And I remember in Zombieland, they were always like, hey, when it happens, very first thing you do, very first thing you do is you get a gun, you get lots of bullets. And I remember that. And now I'll give you a third one. I'll give you a third one. Also, Plankton, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Give everyone something because of capitalism kind of queers them to take it, and then boom, turn it on. Also, another one, Kingsman. Same thing. Samuel L. Jackson uses the cellular communications network to get everyone on something, and he activates them. And so I just think about some of these, and I'm like, okay, and here, here's the one that's a little – the New Zealand – Prime Minister in Australia and Canada and UK. I might get fact checked and, and censored for this, but or they might have tried to say it was the Mandela effect. I've heard people try to already admit that a lot of this stuff didn't happen. Uh, what vaccines? I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, uh, and and I got on one of my burner accounts. I got roasted by. I got added to a group uh, called the uh, the the Covidiots who think that. Um, Canada and Australia and New Zealand had quarantine camps. And I'm like, no, I'm 100% positive that Canada, Australia, and New Zealand had mandatory quarantine camps and that numerous states forced uh, elderly people in retirement homes to take jabs. And we see those death stat statistics. And we also see um, all the – and it does – when you think about that, the camps, and you think about the other thing that the – NAZIs were known for was using medical testing on people without their their proper informed consent. You know, which which Pfizer, by the way, and their CEO and Moderna CEO, they've already come out and said, hey, no one forced you to take it. Pfizer representative under oath in the EU. She was like, hey, we never forced anyone to take this. And, and you know, I, maybe the zombie apocalypse won't happen. But the reason I mentioned that is because this would be another one where they yeah, they acted like N-A-Z-I's. We had all of those zombie movies coming out, and then one of the most popular games for the exact generation of Gen Z growing up and playing those, Gen Z like World War Z, one of the most popular games was, you guessed it, called N-A-Z-I Zombies on Call of Duty. And I'm just like, oh, man... Oh man, what if they do something with the 5G and we're all these outages? The 5G's, they, they all say it. Communication stocks, we've never thought about anyway. I think uh, that's enough of that little theory. We'll get more into uh, some statistics right now. 
uh, unusual stock options volume. It wasn't just one. It was a twofer. Arbutus uh, Pharmaceutical. We had 1,000% unusual options volume. And this is really a pretty chart. I think this is a pretty one. Arbutus Pharmaceutical. Let's make sure we know what was bought. And then we'll see what this company is. What they're curing. What expiration did this guy choose? Uh, I knew it. They all, if, if it was going to be right near the, the other one. Wow. That's a huge position. 16,192 times 45. $728,000. 640 bucks. Bet on Arbutas Pharmaceutical. So this company is a biopharmacological company which is focused on discover, discovering, developing, and commercializing a portfolio of drug candidates for chronic hepatitis B infection. The company's products... The company's uh, products include TKM, HBV, cyclophilin inhibitor OCBO30, TLR9 agonist CYT003, capsid assembly inhibitors, surface antigen secretion inhibitors, sting uh, Agonist CCC DNA formation inhibitors. Wow. Look at that. More DNA formation inhibitors. And they just gave you guys lots of mRNA gene therapy in both of these stocks. Hey, we got to fix those genes now. So they broke your genes. Now they got to fix them. I'm not going to read all of these. They, they look like CIA activation codes. I don't want to wake up your neuro weapons too early. If you're not ready for your skip codes, just let me know. Arbutus Biopharma. Yeah, it's just a coincidence all the Gematria experts live near Raytheon's headquarters. And we're flown out there and live with someone named Sweet Lady who's never seen on camera but apparently has this, you know... Get in. Oops. Neuro weapons. Check them out. That's coming back. The Chinese spy balloon. That's what that's all about, by the way. Neuro weapons. Arbutus Pharma 1 2. I think this is another wave 1. An A, B, C, wave 2. Yeah. Oh, man. I connect this beginning of this wave 1 low. With this wave one high for the time fibs, right around this 13, just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. Watch what happens right around this 13. Yeah, look how crazy I am. Watch what happens right around this 13 time week fib. You can see how nuts I am. I think that uh, ABUS will hold above 221, and I think you're going to see a wild uh, coincidence again uh, from Arbutus. More DNA, and that's a lot of these. It looks like it's the second quarter. It's going to be a fun second quarter, but we're going to hear some some wild news, man. And you know what? Maybe I'm completely off about the fundamentals. I mean, that's just bonus. It doesn't really... My broker is not going to ask, like, hey, but did you know it was going to be the zombie apocalypse when POWW and uh, NEO and Arbutus Biopharma exploded? I'll be like, no, I thought it was going to be... I, I just thought it was going to be something else, man. Just regular rate, rate hiking stuff. Rate falling stuff, and they're like, oh, but yeah, our boots is biopharma. 2.21, I think that's the right invalidation above 2.74. Very high beta, low float. We'll see what this guy knows. Notice he, he didn't buy himself much time. Neither of these guys bought themselves much time. Let's look at uh, a different, we're going to change gears here, get more into inflation. Simon Property Group. Now, I posted about Simon Property Group. This has been one of, um, I bought Simon Property Group. I made a little bit of money on it, but I, I switched to um, real estate ETFs 
instead and focus more on uh, the things that paid monthly. But this was my chart. This, oh, this perfect. Wow, look at this. Pretty damn perfect. This was my chart for Simon Property. I think I should just leave it untouched. Uh, but I think I, I just put it right there is the proper thing to do. And then Simon Property had unusual stock options volume today. We'll make sure we know what that was. It was 1,000% unusual options volume, 99% calls, big real estate stock. These are these are the malls, by the way. So this is kind of interesting. This would seemingly right go against the lockdown narrative because this is a mall. This company owns and operates lots of malls. So what what uh, volatility in Greece? When did they buy these for? Let's see. Let's see if it. That'd be weird if it was this. It looks like these are just front months. Yeah. They just bought a, a so whenever I see a bunch of front months just bought deep in the money, my analysis is usually that they are expecting these options are just going to be exercised and that this is such a large whale. I mean, this is a ton of Delta eight. This is this is an extraordinary amount of money. It would take a long time to even type it. But yeah, these look like these are mostly front months. I'll see. Yeah, front months and uh, April wild. Um, the large positions that is that looks like that's millions and millions of dollars for the April deep in the monies and the March deep in the monies and I think that these are MMs that just want these options to be exercised and they bought the options because that's how big of a position they want to have in Simon property so my most recent video goes into more on real estate specifically uh, PRGO I'll just get real quick I talked about this one a lot again 99% calls, 868% unusual options volume, and PRGO, big time in pharmaceutical preparations like these other ones. But the other one, it's a little more of an inflationary play. These guys are really big in the baby formula game. So the baby formula game, it really, I think that's more of a, perhaps it is, it is more of a pharmaceutical preparations play. But look right around this. They're getting ready. For this, this a completely different sector that's very life changing. Just, just realistically, not just life changing in the sense that if I buy this and I'm correct, I'll get this growing dividend and large capital gains on a, a stock that's you know paying four, three percent, four percent growing dividend, and doing it with stuff that's uh, essential to our economy and our lives like pharmaceutical preparations and baby formula and that it'll pay a dividend while the underlying shares increase uh, for uh, Parisio. But the other way it's life changing is if I don't hit this and I don't get this, well, if I want to have a kid one day, I want to have a baby one day, uh, that baby formula is going to be way, way, way expensive. Uh, and that's going to be an issue for me. It would definitely be an issue if I already had kids and I was struggling with uh, bills already. So uh, I'll get into these uh, material stocks. This was just the other thing that I talked about in the videos. BHP, uh, Boolean, I've already got this marked up. Uh, 15,000 uh, calls, 418% uh, unusual options volume, 97, 98% call volume. We'll look at BHP right now. I've already got it uh, marked up. Again, nice 5 or 6% dividend uh, paying out to shareholders just to buy and hold and get that dividend while um, the price of stuff gets more expensive. I've already got this pretty good above 52.18, one ABC wave two. I think this is another wave one and another wave two. And yes, another wave one and another wave two. Fortuna silver miners and a lot of people have commented on gold recently. The MMs are taking uh, those, those sectors pretty seriously uh, per my analysis and BHP uh, could be a an example of that. So just looking at BHP, one of the world's largest diversified resource companies with operations across several continents, you know, basically, yeah, oil, gas, properties, mining of copper, and yeah, the, the usual iron ore, zinc, lead, copper, uranium, and gold, everything paying out a pretty nice uh, bi yearly d dividend. Looks like I wonder if that X dividend date's already. Oh, that X dividend date's tomorrow. Oh, so that's not very. Yeah. X dividend date's tomorrow. That means if I buy it tomorrow, I won't get the dividend. But there might be a dividend drop, but the dividend drop is probably going to be 
priced in because that's the one part of the efficient market hypothesis that's probably true. Anyway, uh, BHP uh, looks like it could be um, a, another example of the material sector uh, really posing a threat uh, and upside risk because if I'm getting all these gains and I'm getting these huge dividends, and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, but what if it's really funny money and the gold and the, the silver and all the assets, it's not just Bitcoin anymore, and it's not just some some stuff on the the ether sphere. Now a lot of things that I actually need, like food and materials and stuff like that, the cost of the input materials on a lot of the things I buy gets a lot more expensive. Let's look MATV, eight hundred ninety five percent unusual options volume, uh, eight puts, just to play it safe. The rest were calls. So let's see MATV, specialty materials company. Wow, another specialty materials company. Offers a wide range of critical components and engineered solutions. So let's see what their expiration date was. BHP front month. Sorry, MATV was the front month. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. This might be. Oh, wow. This could be. This is very slutty of them. Interesting. Very far. Pretty not pretty very far. Pretty far out of the money. 11,000. Times 160, that's an interesting bet. That's a, oh wow. They're, they're betting, they're, they're waiting. Oh, just on that one lot. 1.76 million on those out of the money, April's, uh, sorry, on those out of the money for June. So it looks like, yeah, the second quarter play. We can just clearly see. Yep, I want to I want to get these big exercise options to start the quarter as soon as it stops. And I know I'm going to sell for a huge profit, presumably, or that I'm going to be in a big profit uh, in June right when the second quarter ends. And then not a single other reading in sight. So that might be one way for price and time targets. But MATV, another one. Materials, massive bet. And they're just getting ready for this 315 date. It's, just, it's late March. I mean, just, just watch. Don't believe me. Just watch. MATV. I've got this marked up. Specialty materials. And pharmaceuticals. That's been the big theme. Or it's been a big theme. It was the big theme today. But commodities, materials, pharma, a lot of stuff that retail is kind of like, why would that go up? Well, they got a, they got a surprise for us. <laughs> I'll tell you that. They're not just going to say that they were rate cut. They're going to blame someone. They got to have some psyop. And they can't just tell us Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve and all those evil banksters are making things more expensive because then what? You know, we might do something about it. They got to tell us some some story. And I remember I, I did a, I, I slaughtered this massive inflation wave that we had in 2022. And I remember I was told in uh, December of 2022 that if any of my inflation predictions had happened, uh, there would be rioting in the streets and all of them happened and there was no rioting in the streets whatsoever. Because they told you a story. They told you some some boogeyman. Vladimir. It was, it's always the Russians. It probably is the Russians. But, you know. One, two, three, four, five. Large wave one, wave A. A, B, C, wave two. Matiev. Materials. Going to get more expensive. Above 10 points, that's really, that's way too wide. But this was their unusual options volume. I don't see a useful downside level, at least on the weekly. But I think it's supporting evidence for the other material stocks that I went into. And then I'll just get an oil one in there just because Ring. Ring was an oil. Ring Energy 
925% unusual options volume, 99, 98% calls. Let's see if they'll tell us when the oil top's going to be. It may probably are just going to be front months. Oh, yeah, they're just front months. Yeah. Did they really buy these for $5? That's wild. I don't want to glorify gambling. This actually looks like it was a gamble. I don't think that's a... Maybe that's an MM. We'll see what happens to oil in the next two weeks. That's kind of wild. That'll be interesting to know. All of this unusual options volume were... were expiring and... Buying in two weeks out of the money. The options market itself is saying there's a 62% chance they expire out of the money. Looks like this guy took about a 50-ish, $53,000 bet. Hmm. But I have seen Ring, REI, on some of these uh, screens before. I don't believe that they were all you know, gambling on out of the monies that expired in two weeks. That was a little bit of Elliott Wave voodoo. And speaking of Elliott Wave voodoo, I think this is something called an expanded flat. Sorry, an expanded, an expanding diagonal. An expanded diagonal which is just the leading diagonal that is the lines are expanded instead of converging. But Ring Energy, not the only oil stock. But yeah, it's basically the oil stock of the day, the biopharma stock of the day, and the material stock of the day or the other commodity stocks of the, of the day. And the ETFs, they usually do foreign markets and the precious metals, it seems. So those are just kind of rotation themes, I guess. Today, the uh, the Emerging Markets ETF and K-Web outperformed. And the NASDAQ and the S&P, I believe, still closed today green. So having new leaders doesn't necessarily equate to a crisis in American equities, but... I have been thinking about, I believe this wave V, by the way, is connected with an expanded flat. The last time oil and biopharma, the last time oil and biopharma and some of these foreign markets like China and IMG had their big rallies. It was it was some really interesting headlines that came out. And this could be a different one. I mean, some of these could just be the AI revolution. And a lot of these, since 2020, each of these sectors has had its own reason. So, for example, Zoom. Most people think that Zoom is a lockdown stock. From what I've been reading about some of their some of their stuff that they're coming out with is that they're actually going to do AI virtual assistance and really try to take that market on. So, you know, I don't think people should live in, in fear or anything, um, but crazy stuff sometimes happens in the world. And a lot of people think that these, these power outages that we've had, uh, that movie coming out about crazy stuff happening with planes, losing connection, and uh, the, the deer acting crazy around the same time prion disease was being confirmed in deer. Now we know prion disease is being confirmed in humans. Dementia, uh, early onset dementia, lots of cancers, lots of, lots of uh, immune problems, lots of heart problems. And maybe the rally is just going to be that one by one they cure each of these things. And it's just the slew of all this bad news coming out. But when I think about some of the, Zoom could be a lockdown stock. 
Now, they're making AI virtual assistants kind of like the movie Sorry to Bother You to take away some of these call center jobs. But AI was just another, uh, sorry, Zoom was just another example. It might be a good microcosm of how some of these stocks could just rally. Some of these stocks could just rally. And I've seen Zoom and uh, Roku on the straddle and strangle screen. But some of these stocks could just rally and there, there could be really kind of standard explanations similar to what we've heard explain Nvidia's rally, the AI revolution, or I'm not saying I'm not comparing Nvidia to Zoom in any way. I'm just saying from a the, the AI boom. I think Nvidia was the big kind of leader of that. And I, I bought the stock AI today too. So you know I think that if Zoom really is an AI stock, above 62 with the real invalidation being this wave too low of 60.14 and then on the weekly not far away 58.87 still within uh, eight or nine dollars this could be a longer term cyclical low i think though the daily chart is really what's important for zoom uh seeing if this is gonna play out so maybe it'll be you know maybe it'll just be ai maybe it'll just in the in the case of the material stocks Maybe in the case of the material stocks, it will be uh, rates falling because rates falling could explain why the cellular communication stocks go up. It could explain why the energy stocks go up. It could explain a lot um, why a lot of these inflationary sectors go up. Maybe it won't be a world war or some type of supply chain issue like 2020. And maybe what we've already seen from the CDC where they just announce this bad stuff and then they tell us that one of the biotechs is working on you know, cancers and uh, stuff like that and then they rally. But I'll be honest, I look at all these, the power outages, the programming, the, the inflation, the supply chains. It just, I'll be honest, of course, I'm the greatest technical analyst to ever live. And the reason that any of these happen, the fact that I get to speculate on why is just kind of a fun example of the, the, the work that I've done paying off that I get to look at these charts and wonder, hey, what's, what's that going to be? What's that going to be? So it doesn't matter to my broker, but when I look at some of these, I don't think that the MMs are going to be a uh, very subtle or chill about explaining why some of these stocks with very particular fundamentals, some would say even materials or fundamentals that would go up if a war happened or if more lockdowns happened or if an outbreak happened or... I think they're going to go the fun route. And of course, that's just fun to them. It's not going to be fun to the regular people when Simon Property and BHP Bullion and MATV uh, make everyone's expenses uh, go up significantly. And this is, you know, something I've seen with Moo, the agribusiness ETF. I've seen it with corn, the, uh, the corn ETF. Obviously, so this is a theme, and I've tried to, I think I've tried to convince myself for a bit that they're going to just say, oh, it's rates falling, and it's announcements about how we have to cure some of the vaccine injuries, and it's not, it's not World War Three. it's just rates falling, that's why oil's gonna explode, and that's why baby formula's gonna explode, and that's why biotech's gonna explode, and oh, it's not the 5G stocks going down that's gonna cause cellular communications to explode, and, but, I'll be honest, my analysis, going back to the chart I think about more than any, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, co-diagnostics, a lot of these are 
Moderna's still down here. Let's just say that. Pfizer's still down here. When I think about wave three for Pfizer, Codex, Moderna, wave three for a lot of things, I'm pretty sure the market's going to turn into a movie. A movie that gets the whole world involved. And I think the MMs know it's going to be a zombie movie.